Today, I'm going to show you how to make a push to talk button that you can use with your foot so you can keep your hands free while you game. So let's start off with the basic concept, and we'll explain this using a makey makey. So first of all, what is a makey makey? It's essentially this all-in-one board that allows you to take discrete inputs. Here I'm going to be using a foot pedal from a sewing machine, and essentially turn these discrete outputs into controls that you can actually use to control, I think it's designed for like little games made using Scratch and stuff like that, or other little MIDI type stuff. But essentially you just create a circuit using that ground rail at the bottom, and then it's got six inputs on the front. It's like the arrow keys, space, and click. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hook up my foot pedal from the sewing machine, and I'm gonna hook that up to one of the directional inputs I don't use for the game that, is that I play. Um, in this first instance, I'm going to use the left arrow key, but that's kind of just arbitrary. It could be any of these as long as they don't impact the gameplay. But once we can hook that up, it will we just essentially program the software Discord. I'm using Discord uh, to recognize the left arrow as the input to activate the push to talk. the easiest way that I found to make to make this from what I had. I just used a bunch of stuff that I had laying around. So a machine pedal, makey makey, plugged it all up and I had this running in like five minutes, if that. So this was a pretty simple layout. Um, one big problem with this is that there's only a limited number of outputs that you can use on the makey makey. Um, and I wanted to be have a little bit more availability. So I decided to use an Arduino and specifically the uh, Pro Mini, also some resistors, LEDs, and a big push button. The LEDs are mainly just for flash. They're not actually required to make the fit function. But here's my first prototype. Again, that button's just kind of in the front. I modeled it basically after the shape of the sewing machine pedal so I can put my foot on it pretty easily. Um, plug it into the computer, uh, and then I've got one light that's just on all the time, and then one that turns on when you you push the button so you can kind of tell when it's working and it should be working. And also I wrote a program so it will send whatever key press I want to the computer. Um, I also decided after my first prototype, I wanted to use RGB LEDs instead of the two discrete LEDs just because then I can have whatever color I want. So let's get into the circuit. It's actually pretty much two discrete circuits. They just happen to exist in the same thing. One is for our LED, so up there at the top you've got pins 3, 5, and 6 for the LED, one for each color, and then pin 7 for the button. And essentially what's going to happen is you'll press the button and it will tell the Arduino to change the color of the LED. you will let go of the button, it will tell the, the Arduino will change the color of the LED back. So it's kind of a roundabout cycle there, but it's kind of two simple circuits. Here we can actually see it working. I've got that button hooked up and you can see the LED changing colors. Again, I've written a simple code. I will put this uh, links to the 3D printed parts, the Arduino code, the parts list, all the tools you need in the description. I'm going to write an instructable to go along with this because this is actually a kind of complicated thing to wrap your head around, but I think it's a pretty simple execution. For assembly, essentially it's just soldering all of the things together. There's only the, in this case, I've upgraded, now that I have three LEDs, I need three resistors. And I'm using heat shrink tubing here just to make sure that none of the resistors short with each other, but it's just to make sure that it performs exactly as we expect. So the heat shrink tubing is totally optional here. You just wanna make sure your resistors are pulled apart a little bit. As I go ahead and solder the rest of this together, I'm gonna to touch on the code really quickly. Um, it's pretty simple, like I mentioned, Earlier, it's essentially just when the button is pressed, we change the color of the LED, and when the button is released, we change the color of the LED back. We do that all with the setup as well as the, the loop. So setup just turns it on to one color, and then the loop just checks to see if the button is pressed. If it is, change the color to the, the new color, and if it's not, make sure it's changed back to the original color. Um, and a note here on the is important on the type of Arduino that you use. So there's a specific chip that 
some of the Arduinos use, I believe it's the Mini, the Pro Mini, and the Leonardo use a specific type of chip, which is built in. It's really easy to basically recognize it as a keyboard device. So we just basically use that feature of the of the Arduino to send the button press that you want. In this case, I've programmed, and you'll see if you look at the code that I have, um, I'm using left alt because that way I can continue to use the button on my keyboard. So if I am just sitting or whatnot, I can just press alt on my keyboard instead of having to move all the way across from like the, the mouse or anything um, and just use that same button for both. Uh, here in the video, I've got my LED, and this is actually one of my, my earlier 3D printed cases. And this is actually really helpful to make sure all of my wires were separated enough and soldered in the correct position. Um, so I just put the button and the LED in the position that they go and then solder them together from there. Uh, I will put a modified version, which is basically a stripped down version, which is just the cutout for the buttonhole and for the LED on Thingiverse as well. So you can use this when you solder everything together because I found this really helpful. Um, but I just soldered everything together, keeping my wires essentially where, where I want them. And I use some of this, this ribbon wire from, it came out of an old computer, just tore off a little strip. I only needed maybe about two or three inches of it. And there we go. We've got everything wired up and connected, getting those five wires into the Arduino, to the LED, and to the button. And now everything should be functioning properly. And here with everything all wired together, let's get it plugged in and just do one more test before we get everything into the case, but it works as expected. And of course, I don't have any video here or anything to prove that it's working on the computer, but it was making the, the changes on the computer that I needed. So I'm all set to go ahead and put it into the case. The case for me, I just 3D printed, but it can be made out of anything. I just 3D printed the case because it's what I have access to. And it was really easy for me to make this case to go along with, but you could make this out of whatever you need or whatever you have access to. And once the LED and the button are seated properly, I just went ahead and pressed the Arduino into place. Um, it's got that little output in the back so you can plug it into the computer. And then the, the base for this is just snaps. It. It's a little tight the first time you pull everything off the printer, um, but you kind of just press it all together and it'll, it'll fix itself together. And that's everything. It's all assembled, making the changes, changing colors, and it's working as I expect it to. So that's good for me. Thanks for watching.